Here you go. Mr. I just don't know microphones. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you Joss Hill Whedon to receive in your hand Wesleyan's honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. <coughs> an an award-winning writer, director, and producer, you've done a brilliant job in whatever medium you choose. Film, television, comic books, music composition, and the internet. Who else? Who else at your age has directed a film with the biggest box office opening weekend of all time, while also creating a body of work that has become the subject of PhD dissertations and conferences around the world? A master of popular culture and a true American storyteller, you have fashioned unique worlds with dazzling superheroes, teenage vampire slayers, <laughs> horrible doctors, and talking toys who speak in witty language described by your devoted fans as weedness. Recently, you surprised us all by directing an exhilarating new film of a Shakespeare comedy shot in 12 days at your own home. A loyal supporter of the Wesleyan film major, you've hired Wesleyan graduates and returned to campus often to talk about your work. Today, Wesleyan is proud to honor your astonishing, unbounded creativity. For your ability to inspire awe, fear, and delight, we are privileged to award you Wesleyan's honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. Commencement address, it's going well, it's going well. Thank you, Janine, for um, making me do this. <laughs> okay. No, it's, this is gonna be great, this is gonna be a good one. You guys, you guys are psyched, you guys are pumped. It's, it's, it's gonna go really well. Um, two roads diverge in a wood. I'm not that lazy. Um, uh, I actually, uh, I sat through many graduations. Um, when I was sitting where you guys are sitting, uh, the speaker was Bill Cosby. Um, funny man Bill Cosby. He was very funny. And he was very pretty. Um, but... So don't try. That was it. Like, he didn't buy that back at all. Politicians, social workers, you want to be an artist, your body 
his ambition mulch. Okay? Your body wants to make some babies and then go in the ground and fertilize things. That's it. And that seems like a bit of a contradiction. That doesn't seem doesn't seem fair. For one thing, we're telling you, go out into the world. Exactly what your body's saying. I believe these contradictions and these tensions are the greatest gift that we have, and hopefully I can explain that. Um, but first let me say, when I talk about contradiction, I'm talking about something that is a constant in your life and in your identity. Not just in your body, but in your own mind, in ways that you may recognize, you may not. Let's just say hypothetically that two roads diverged in a wood and you took the path less traveled. Part of you is just going, look at that path! Over there, it's much better. It, everybody's traveling on it and it's, it, it's paved and there's, a, there's like a Starbucks every 50 yards. It's, this, is, this is wrong. For this one, there's panels, Robert Frost's body. And, <laughs> Somebody should have moved back, I think. But this feels weird. And not only is your mind telling you this, it is on that other path. It is behaving in as though it is on that path. It is doing the opposite of what you are doing. And for your entire life, you will be doing on some level the opposite, not only of what you are doing, but of what you think you are. That is just going to go on. What you do with all your heart, you will do the opposite of. And what you need to do is to honor that, to understand it, to unearth it, to listen to this, this other voice. All right, I'm losing this now, because otherwise it's coming off in a dramatic fashion at the wrong time. I know, I worked on this hair for a long time, so. You have, which is a rare thing, the ability and the responsibility to listen to the dissent in yourself, to at least give it the floor, okay? Because it is the key, not only to consciousness, but to real growth. To accept duality is to earn identity. And identity is something that you are constantly earning. It is not just who you are. It is a process that you must be active in. And it's not parroting your, parroting your parents or even the thoughts of your learned teachers. It is now more than ever about understanding yourself so you can become yourself. When I talk about this contradiction and this tension, there's two things I want to say about it. One never goes away. And if you think achieving something, if you think that solving something, if you think a career or a relationship will quiet that voice, it will not. If you think that happiness means no peace, you will never be happy. Peace comes from the acceptance of the part of you that can never be at peace. It will always be in conflict. If you accept that, everything gets a lot better. The other reason is because you are establishing your identities and your beliefs, you need to argue yourself down because somebody else will. Somebody's going to come at you. They're, whatever your belief, your idea, your ambition, somebody's going to question it. And unless you have first, you won't be able to answer back. You won't be able to hold your ground. You don't believe me? Try taking a stand on just one leg. You need to see both sides. Now, if you do, does this mean you get to change the world? Well, I'm getting to that, so just chill. All I can say at this point is I think we can all agree that the world could use a little changing. Um, 
explain this to you about the world, but we broke it. Sorry. It's a hard time to go out in there. And it's a weird time in our country. And the thing about our country is, oh, it's nice. I like it. It's not long on contradiction or ambiguity. It's not long on these kind of things. It likes things to be simple. It likes things to be pigeonholed. Good or bad. Black or white. Blue or red. And we're not that. We're more interesting than that. And the way that we go into the world understanding is to have these contradictions in ourselves and see them in other people and not judge them for it. To know that in a world where debate has kind of fallen away and given way to shouting um, and bullying, the best thing is not just the idea of honest debate, the best thing is losing a debate. Because it means that you learned something and you changed your position. The only way, really, to understand your position and its worth is to understand the opposite. And that doesn't mean the crazy guy on the radio who's spewing hate. It means the decent human truths of all the people who feel a need to listen to that guy. You are connected to those people. He's con they're connected to him. You can't get away from it. This connection is part of contradiction. It is the tension I was talking about, because tension isn't about two opposite points. It's about the line in between them, and it's being stretched by them. And we need to acknowledge and honor that tension and the connection that that tension is a part of. Our connection, not just to the people we love, but to everybody, including people who can stand and wish for Serial killing is freedom from connection. Um, certain large investment firms have established freedom from connection. But we as people never do, and we're not supposed to, we shouldn't want to. We are individuals, obviously, but we are more than that. So here's the thing about changing the world. It turns out that's not even the question, because you don't have a choice. You are going to change the world, because that is actually what the world is. You do not pass through this life. It passes through you. You experience it, you interpret it, you act, and then it is different. That happens constantly. You are changing the world. You always have been. And now, it becomes real on a level that it hasn't been before. And that's why I've been talking only about you and the tension within you, because you are, not in a cliche sense, but in a weirdly literal sense, the future. And after you uh, walk up here and walk back down, you're gonna be the present. You will be the broken world and the act of changing it in a way that you haven't been before. You will be so many things. And the one thing that I wish I'd known and want to say is don't just be yourself. Be all of yourselves. Don't just live. Be that other thing connected be life. Live all of your life. Understand it, see it, appreciate it.